Hello, everybody. Thanks again for joining me uh, for another Ebbit Lead Studio Update. I know it's like only... We're still in June, uh, right at the end here now, but I thought it's due uh, a nice update on what's happening here in the studio. I've got a couple of uh, projects to preview, one for the Slanesh 40k Army for Carnifex, my good buddy and co-host on the Crown of Command podcast. That's now finished. Uh, I had one banner to finish on the Land Raider, and now that's done. And so I want to go through that and just show that with you and as a final, you know, uh, Final review before I pack it and send it away, which will be tomorrow. So, kind of effects can look forward to that. And also a uh, Bretonian uh, commission I did as well for a gentleman in the USA, Mike. Hi, Mike, if you're watching this, I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, there will be another, like, sort of short tutorial uh, on how I did the horses and that kind of thing, which will be um, uh, named uh, after the challenge on our Discord, uh, the Barter Demon. Um, so yeah, that was really fun. I've never painted Bretonians before, so we can have a look at that as a showcase. Uh, I'll look, uh, look at what stuff I've got in the mail, uh, from other clients, uh, and friends of mine in the community who sent me commissions. We can check out what's going to come up in the future. And, um, so we're going to do that. We're going to do all the good stuff first. We're going to get all that good stuff out of the way. And uh, after that, um, I'll, I just want to thank some people and uh, talk about uh, what's coming up in the future in terms of like uh, tutorials and uh, army projects and uh, battle reports and that kind of thing. So let's go get to the good stuff first. Let's check out on the what's on the painting table. Okay, so let's come down to the workbench and see what I've been working on here. I've got um, eight Bretonian knights I'm doing for Mike, who contacted me through Discord. About doing this little commission for him, which I've um, had a great pleasure doing because I do love heraldry, I love knights, I've never painted Bretonians before, and these were just uh, a real pleasure to paint. So I try to individualize each knight with its own sort of very simple kind of iconography on the body and the shield to match. Now, uh, I didn't have any transfers, and Mike didn't have any transfers either. He was quite specific that he didn't really need any sort of flashy kind of heraldry and that kind of thing, but I wanted each night, each night to have some kind of identifying marks, so it gave his own sort of, or, you know, their own sort of house kind of um, emblem and that kind of thing, uh, made a simple banner uh, for it as well, and that will be part of a tutorial video series, maybe two, maybe the banner will be a separate one, as it's a double-sided banner. And the uh, how I painted the horses uh, and that kind of thing. Not the actual knights because the knights were, you know, basically the same colour and same pattern as the as the horses. So um, yeah, look forward to that. And here are the finished knights for Mike in the US. So um, yeah, I'm really happy with these how they turned out, and uh, they were quite a lot of work actually, more than what I expected. But I really enjoyed painting them and expect a bit of a video on the banner, how I did that, and how I did all the, the horses, basically, so in the near future. Okay, guys, so just to give you a bit of a preview as to what they looked like when they were finished. Thank you very much. Now, I think some people are wondering, what happened to that solo Advanced Hero Quest game and everything, the series you're talking about that you advertised ages ago? Yeah, well, uh, between then and now, sort of um, time's been very, very limited and fractured in places. So, but I have still kept on with it. I've got these five henchmen, which are named after some of my patrons, um, uh, and uh, it's still going to go ahead. I've still got my plans of doing the solo game, and thanks to Ed at Minisodes, uh, his YouTube channel, and the way he's, um, you know, sort of thematically giving these Warhammer 40k 2nd edition battles a lot of kind of like a recap kind of um, story and all that, I really like that, and it gave me some good ideas about doing the Hero Quest, Advanced Hero Quest series in the same kind of way. Um, much shorter videos, but then just giving you the highlighted action points of uh, where they went in their adventures and that kind of thing. So, yeah, they're still on the workbench. You've got the shields here to do, which is on my, my ruler. Okay, so once I've knocked those shields up, uh, painted the bases goblin green, we're ready to roll. Um, this is my other personal project. This is the uh, the 
the dragon princes. So I've done one of the horses here already. And now it's just basically doing the other four and doing the riders and having them ready for a next fantasy game because I'm going to play an all cavalry high off list, which would be quite exciting. So yeah, it should be cool. And no moving trays, even better. Another personal project I'm doing is I'm sort of fixing up my goblin chariots and I had these two lost souls from many, many years ago. I don't even know which company made them now. I'm thinking it's either uh, Black Tree Design or Heartbreaker, but I don't know. I've had them for so long. I had them like painted in these really old, kind of old hammer style dark colors and and decided, well, I'm going to put them on my chariots as some chariot crew, and I put some shields on there. I removed the other metal shields that they come with. I've sort of sawn them off or cut them off, filed them down, and put some plastic ones. Put a plastic one on here, and I've got a metal shield that I found off one of the, I think, Nightmare Games models, and uh, just took off the the, the central um, uh, boss on, the, on there and took that off there. Shaved it down and make it nice and round. So I just got to paint those up and put them, attach them to my uh, hopefully newly painted chariot soon. And to accompany those two, I've got these guys. Uh, now these are kindly sent to me with a whole other other common common goblins by Matthew in the UK. Thank you again, Matthew, for that. And also now a recent patron to uh, my channel and uh, helping support me with um, with my project. So. These have been converted. They did carry axes, but now I've, I've decided, well, I want these on the back of my chariots. So I've cut off the the axe, uh, replaced that with a, well, if you look at my banner tutorial, it's the same thing, two millimeter uh, PVC plastic rod. And then the shields are basically old Advanced Hero Quest Skaven shields. I've uh, removed all the detail and uh, defaced them and just made them nice and flat and clean as good as possible basically uh, glue them to the top and I'll just paint some icons on there and put a banner on there so it's sort of flying behind them on the back of the chariots so that's something I'm working on now as a personal project which I'm really enjoying doing so thanks again Matt for those they're absolutely amazing mate. now uh, for Peter Olsen uh, the uh, the demon from Sweden this is for you mate this this pink tutorial I'm doing now on this wonderful chaos warrior kindly donated by Pete uh, David in the US he sent me some beautiful old hammer chaos models and I thought well I'm going to test out one of the color schemes and I know pink's been one of those colors that people have asked about and I thought okay well I'm going to start doing a tutorial on that painting tutorial on that one and this is where I'm up to at the moment uh, but other commissions have got in the way so it will get done and it will be released uh, quite shortly but yeah this is for you Peter, you wanted to know how to paint pink? Well, we're going to paint pink very soon, okay? Be very, the most simple way of doing it, okay? So I hope you enjoy that in the future. Me old mate Nagash, yes, he's been left here to squander. <laughs> I haven't got finished, I haven't got around to even putting one bit of paint on this guy uh, since the old demon finished, and um, there was just no way I'm ever going to get that done in time. I didn't want to rush it, and there's still a massive video. I mean, I, I think it might be just too long. Uh, in the end, it might go on forever. So we'll see how we go. We might just edit it down uh, to a very digestible uh, size that you can just see sort of an overview of what it is. And plus, also, I had I don't actually use lighting anymore in my videos. I don't I don't use a, a, a lamp anymore because I found the lamp giving this horrible yellow tinge to the to the camera, and I didn't like it. So I just use my um, LED above me now as my lamp light. Uh, which gives much more of a natural looking color but really enjoying this one it's it's going to be done in uh, metals as you can see um, but yeah it's the start this is the very first model to my undead um, uh, model uh, army project uh, which i will cover everything about it like the, doing the regiments and all that kind of stuff the banners and everything so it's gonna be like a really long series uh, but i'm really 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 happy and excited about doing a fourth edition army thanks again to david in the US for helping me uh, start and kickstart that off because um, now I've got actual models to paint for it and not only just two characters kindly sent by Gary Morley of course the legend uh, sculptor designer from the uh, Citadel team so yeah really happy and uh, really want to get stuck into this and make this a reality um, and uh, bring that to you guys soon and don't forget me boss okay sorry 
the banner git. Now, the banner git here, I am going to do a painting tutorial, Matt, and do the banner for him, uh, for Matt, uh, who kindly again sent me this to, sent this to me, uh, to bolster the, uh, the green skins in my collection and also to make some videos about how I painted them as he's painting his own and night goblins and common goblins at the moment. He's collecting those and from eBay sales and that kind of thing. So looking forward to doing that. Again, it's another one for the future and uh, it will not be too too long away now. So I look forward to that. Uh, yeah, um, we're gonna look at a future commission uh, sent by David in the US. And this is for a wonderful fourth edition Undead Army. So we have the, we have the Doom Lord, Dieter Helschnick. Uh, still in uh, still in uh, in its plastic wrapping, so I really look forward to doing that. It's got um, loads of plastic um, stuff still on sprue that I need to assemble and put together. So there's I think there's a number of chariots. It's quite a mobile cavalry based army, but it does have some foot troops in there as well. So yeah, it's more cavalry in there, but it's a lot of cavalry, a lot of chariots, that kind of thing. Um, I think this one has uh, Ark and the Black in it. Yeah, Ark and the Black is in there in that, in that wrapping. So, yeah, wonderful project. Thanks again, David, for that because I really look forward to doing this one. There's quite a number of more boxes there and more plastic skellies. Um, and to go through what's in this glorious bag, you know, things like the, um, the old wraiths. All Gary, Mo Gary Morley designs, of course. Really beautiful looking models. Really looking forward to doing these uh, in the classic color schemes. There's an old hammer armored skeleton here. It's pretty cool too. Maybe a Perry, Perry design, that one. Just want to give a quick look at what we've got in here. Is that plethora of um, different characters. I think they're mostly whites um, and that kind of thing. Krell's in here as well. Got a mummy. The mummy characters. Um, this guy's a pretty cool guy as well. Yeah, and I've got to be honest, I never really liked the fourth edition Undead back in the 90s. Really didn't like them, didn't care for them one bit, but now I absolutely love them. Um, I, think they're, I think they're probably... The, you know, I really like Rackham's Undead as well, the range of that Rackham did. But um, I do have a real soft spot for the 4th edition Undead now. And I'll be feverishly collecting and painting these bottles, not only for commission, but for myself as well. So hopefully combined, uh, me and David can put some nice games of Warhammer Fantasy battle uh, in the future featuring Undead. I think, well, not for the first time because Justin's used them, but in a classic fourth edition army um yeah these will look wonderful and the real gems in here as well like this particular undead character set from marauder miniatures absolutely love these models uh especially this guy here with the halberd yeah just amazing and uh, of course that wizard model i think is featured in a lot of the fourth edition uh like setup photographs in the back with the river and you got like a big undead undead horde against some bretonians i believe yeah, really, really nice models. Can't wait to get them stuck into these. They're brilliant. And there's a necromancer, mounted necromancer. As you can see, the plastic on this blister and the, and the actual blister itself is just really sun damaged. So, yeah, really nice old relics and models here. Um, again, really looking forward to doing, uh, doing that guy. Oh, look what I've got here. This would be a nice one to do too. That's the Marauder Giant. Uh, that will be done after the Undead have been finished. Um, or maybe before, we'll see how we go. That's a big project. And of course, that will be accompanied with a video. Um, maybe broken into several parts. I don't know how I'm going to do that yet because it is a massive project. I've got one myself and I've painted it myself personally. And um, it's a beautiful model and it should be given every every you know bit of time and care and attention to detail because you know you really want to paint this because uh, it's a centerpiece really um, of anybody's collection that and dragons i think 
you know, the giant and the dragon is really the centerpiece of your model collection. So yeah, lots of good stuff in here. I think there's some carrions in here too. Yeah, some carrions. Cool, I love those guys. Love the little dudes on top, little wraiths. Great. So, yes, looking forward to that. So thanks again, David, for this one, mate. I'm really looking forward to getting those cracked open and putting them together for you and start painting them, but uh, not until I finish some other commissions uh, but before then. Okay, so guys, this is not Old Hammer or Hero Hammer related. Uh, this is my old um, original Infinity uh, Army for a left that's for sale, and I thought I'd just put that up here in the update. Just in case there's anybody out there who wants a highly pro-painted um, Aleph army, I can send you the photos of all the models, of course. Uh, this this army will fund my trip back to Australia to see my parents, which I haven't seen for a very long time, and I just do not have uh, the financial ability to get there any other way. And as I can't, I just will not be paying, uh, playing Infinity, I don't think, uh, forever. Um, I don't really see myself playing it ever again. Um, sadly, I really enjoyed the time that I did have with Infinity, but um, those days are long gone. Um, unless by some chance one day in the future I do get the the, um, the itch to play um, Infinity again, I doubt it. But um, as I know where my heart lies in terms of gaming these days, Infinity is a wonderful game system which has some amazing models and I loved the 10 years or so that I had um, enjoying painting and collecting um, a lot of these models. Unfortunately, I, so I sold everything else. I, this is the Vedic army for a left that I have left. Probably one of my favorite models, this one, that and the Asura, the Divas and that kind of thing. But yeah, but I would like to see this not in a foam case, but uh, actually being played on a tabletop somewhere around the world um, and people enjoying the models as they should be. Uh, I really don't like having stuff just sitting in cases doing nothing. I really don't like doing that at all. So if you're an active Infinity player or a collector or whatever, um, please get in touch with me at Evie Led Studios. I can send you the photos of all the models um, and uh, the price, of course. And uh, if you're in the US, you're probably going to benefit a lot because it'll be, a, you know, be in Australian dollars. So the conversion rate's probably prime now for this kind of thing. But um, yeah, I really want to see this go to a good home. It, it allows me to finance the trip back to Australia to see my parents and help them move house and um, uh, see my family, of course, uh, most importantly. Um, and, uh, yeah, you, in return, get a, a beautifully painted army. This is my personal army. It's not one I did for commission. The, these are all my personal, part of my personal collection. And, um, you know, I put, oh, geez, you know, I'll never get back what money-wise what I did uh, for this army, never. Um, but, you know, I'd much rather see it go to someone in someone's, uh, in someone's collection where they're playing it actively and um, enjoying the game and, as um, you know, all miniature games, tabletop games should be played and enjoyed. So yeah, I thought I'd leave that with you guys. If you are interested, please contact me at ebbyled at gmail.com uh, for more information on uh, further pictures and pricing. Thank you. So on my spray bench here that I've sprayed up outside, we've got a classic third edition high off team sent by, I believe the gentleman's name is James from Instagram that contacted me. So thanks, James. Got that plus a character and Georg, my good friend from Austria, sent me a classic Blood Bowl team to paint it for third edition. So expect that to feature once they're finished. Me and Paul give those a give those a run out on the field uh, when they're done. Okay, and the last one we're going to cover is the Slanesh 40k army for my good friend and buddy and co-host from the Crown Command podcast. Mr. Carnifex, and this is it in all its finished glory. Um, yes, yeah, so I really enjoyed this. It's a, it's a massive project. It's, a, it's the biggest project I've done so far. I think the Undead Army for David would be the second biggest uh, project. So, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's an investment. Um, you know, this, this army in terms of time, 
for me um, and obviously the monetary value for Carnifex, you know, it's the it's probably the, it's probably the same value as my Mac PC, but um, I know which one will last longer and give more enjoyment. <laughs> That's definitely going to be this, because the Mac PC after six years you can pretty much toss it, and something like this, um, you know, will be with you forever. So um, and uh, yeah, so I, I hope this uh, now from here it's going to go to the spray booth to get uh, all uh, varnished. And um, you know, and then it's going to be packed and sent away tomorrow uh, with the Bretonian stuff that I've just finished off uh, for Mike. So again, Carnifex, thank you very much for this, mate. Um, you're my first big customer, and I really appreciate that. I've really enjoyed painting this army, especially those noise marines. Just looked at those and I think, my God, you know, this will take me forever. And they did. They took about a day each, um, in some cases a day and a half. But the demonettes were wonderful to paint, great little. And unfortunately, I didn't do any videos on these, uh, sadly. Uh, I don't know why. I think I just didn't have the right setup or I just wasn't confident in making decent sort of videos. But now I've sort of got the swing of things and it seems to be working a lot better. There's the champion uh, that I did on the video on. And, of course, the... The sex cows there. Uh, I'll try to shout out some names of other companies because the Dreadnought is not a 3D scan. It is actually sc sculpted by hand. And I'm sorry, I just forget the name of the person who did it. I'll need to pop up on the screen uh, where you can get this model from uh, because it's come from, it comes from a legit company that you can buy it. It's in resin. Uh, now, the Land Raiders original, it was an absolute torrid state when I when I got it because the sponsons are all busted and I pinned it basically in place so they can swing. Now uh, I had fun with the banner. <laughs> it was torturous, but I decided on this particular face on the um, on this side of the banner. So it's got kind of like uh, Dragon Ball Z vibes to it. I don't know. It looks like a screaming banshee type woman. Um, so I think Carnifex gave the stamp of approval on that one. Where Weevil Miniatures, my good friend Marcus in Australia, produces these models, and they're great. You know, he, he's got a massive catalogue. I didn't realise it. It was covered in uh, on tabletop. Uh, Jerry did a whole uh, expose on his website and everything. I was really blown away as to how many models he's made. It's uh, incredible, and painted himself. Like he's painted a lot of the collection himself, and. Um, I'll throw a link up here to his personal store. So go and check it out. Uh, Carnifex is using these as dread, uh, sorry, not dread, what's it, Terminators. Slanesh Terminators. I think it's a great idea, and the Lord is on its um, majestic steed. Now, these, of course, have been featured in the battle reports that me and Paul have had the joy of playing, and Paul's really enjoy taking these out. We've got some Renegades as well, and we've got some other models here. One's from Satire Miniatures and some from Nightmare Miniatures. Um, so, you know, if you're looking for alternatives to the beautiful Perry Renegades, which are cost an absolute fortune, I, I presume, on the second-end market, then they are worthy substitutes. So check those guys out. Please support your, you know, your smaller companies out there making these models. They're trying to make a living um, in doing something they love for the community. So please help support them. So guys, that's it. That's the Slanesh Army. It's going to be packed up, set away. If you're lucky, if you live in Sydney, you may actually face this on the tabletop and get to play um, kind of effects in person. That'd be really cool to see. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks again for watching. Now we'll go on to other news in a minute, guys. Okay, so welcome back. I hope you really enjoyed uh, the progress I've been making in the last month or so and uh, the projects I've worked on and finished and completed and the stuff that's coming up. There's more stuff I haven't showed you yet because that's sort of in boxes and hidden away and uh, but we're coming out in some kind of form of uh, painting uh, tutorial or something on my community page on YouTube. So check out that and stay tuned. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. So to keep up to date with all the all the photographs and uh, studio updates there. And uh, 
Now, uh, I just want to go through and uh, talk about the heavy lead painting tutorials that I've been doing. I started about five weeks ago and uh, I have currently three people on board with me. Thank you very much to George and Keith and Juan for joining me on this uh, new venture of mine. And um, I'm happy to say it seems to be giving positive results. And uh, I just want to talk about it for you guys so that you know exactly what it is and um, how, how to go about uh, starting it, joining it, uh, knowing what kind of things you are expected to see and the quality of the stream and the, like the video quality and that kind of thing of my tutorials and how that could help you and that kind of thing. So to do that, we need to head over to my Patreon. So let's go do that now. Okay, so when you come to Patreon and you go to the memberships, you'll be greeted with this screen here. Now we've got the standard bearer, which is a three dollar a month, which have forty, thank thankfully forty pa patrons are joining me here, which is fantastic. Thank you very much, guys, for that. Um, so that basically gives you all the access to loads of bonus content that I have on there, which is uh, maybe videos. It could be uh, audio, um, uh, either interviews or stuff that's not even going to be on the Cranica Man podcast. It's just like interviews I have with um, special guests or with uh, other patrons. So, yeah, some lots of stuff there or early access uh, audio or videos. Then we come down to these uh, painting, heavy lead painting studio tiers. And basically, the first one is $15 a month. Um, thankfully, have two patrons there. Thank you very much, uh, Keith and George. And they are just one 30-minute lesson. So basically, what you're in, uh, what you what you what you will receive is basically a, a thirty minute lesson per month that you can arrange the time and date for with me beforehand. Uh, we go through what you want to learn in the lesson. You know, you tell me what you want to focus on during that thirty minutes, and then you will meet me in Discord on the Discord group. We'll have a look at that in a minute, and then uh, you will. Uh, see me as a shared screen looking at my paint palette and the model model and we'll paint it and um, do that for 30 minutes and have a chat and all that kind of thing so that's basically the 30 minute lesson and they're all really the same but they've got different times so one's for 60 minutes per uh, per month one's two hours uh, for one hour lessons per month and one is uh, priced at four lessons uh, for one hour uh, per week, which is amazing because uh, one of my patrons, Juan, is doing that for his uh, high elf uh, project, which has really been fun to work with on him, uh, with him for that. So that's basically what it is. So now let's have a look at the uh, Discord and have a look at the um, uh, recorded video to see what you're expected to see during these lessons. Okay, so this is my shared screen on Discord. So this is kind of the quality of the stream. Uh, that I hope you will see on the other side. Obviously, I can't see <laughs> the other person's screen. I don't know what that looks like, but this is my stream, and this should be pretty close to what it is on your end. Now, I've, I've asked the guys about that, and they said the stream quality is very good, very high. I would like to, at some stage, get a 4K camera, webcam camera, to increase the quality of the of the picture. With my help with my Patreons, I'll be able to afford that at some stage to increase the uh, the pitch quality and the streaming quality, which would be even better. So the more that it grows, the more um, more the more uh, access I have to funds to access better equipment and that kind of thing. So that that just gives you an idea of the quality of the uh, streaming service during the lesson. Okay, so what you're viewing here is basically the recorded video that I did for one of my lessons with George, uh, looking at uh, painting yellows for Bad Moon Orcs. And it's it's filmed, obviously, in high definition. That is then uploaded after the lesson to a Google Drive or some kind of cloud service that you can access, download, and keep forever. So basically, you keep those lessons forever. So it's not like you're having to retain everything during the lesson. Some people like to just watch and um, just chat. Some people like to paint along. And then that way you have access to that lesson afterwards and you can always, uh, you know, have access to it. You can always go back and watch it, look over the steps I did. And, um, you know, you have also uh, ways of communicating with me after the lesson and uh, asking questions if, if need be. But um, everything should be contained within the 30 minutes or one hour that we have together. And again, you have that video kept on your hard drive 
to uh, review and go back back to uh, whenever you need to. Okay, guys, so I hope you enjoyed that little overview of the painting tutorials. And if that's interest, if that interests you, then you can always contact me to know more about it. But I think I pretty much, you know, told you everything that you need to expect and uh, would expect from those tutorials. Um, so yeah, it's only once a month, or you know, you can have it twice a month, four times a month, however you want to budget it for yourself and whatever suits you. It could be a massive army project, it could be just like a character model, or it could be some aspect of painting that you have trouble with, you know, you're not locked into any contracts. It's like maybe you only need two lessons and you're right. Maybe you need four lessons. Maybe you need, you know, six months of lessons. Maybe you need a year of lessons. Maybe you need two years. I don't know. It really depends on you. Depends, you know, I think most people enjoy just coming to chat with me and paint together and, you know, they learn some tips. They learn something new um, out of the lessons, which is the main thing that, that I get you know, satisfaction from they get the feedback saying, "Yeah, mate, that really helped out." You know, now I now I know how to do that. That that just saves me so much time. Um, now I can see some instant results and that kind of thing, which is the most beneficial part about doing lessons with people is that you know you're teaching them something they benefit from. They can then apply that um, directly into their painting. It's going to save them a lot of time and a lot of agony, especially painting yellow. Those kind of things. You know, George learned a lot just painting, just me showing that few steps few simple steps painting yellow and that that'll save him so much time so much frustration later down the road so if you enjoy the ab lead painting series that i've got on youtube and you would want to do that with a on a one-to-one -one basis with me it could be about banners could be about painting models could be about doing basing could be about making a diorama even though i'm not uh, maybe terrain as well you know i've, I've built terrain um and I will be doing more of that in the future. I hope I hope I have more time to do that. And uh, if there's a commission you want to do on for terrain, if there's a if you want to teach me how, teach you how to make terrain, you know that could be another aspect of it as well. So there's lots of ways we could do it. And uh, or painting the backdrops. Okay, so there's a lot of those backdrops I use for Khan Effects's army. Those kind of things. If you want to learn how to do that. I could teach you how to do that. Again, not a prof not a professed professed uh, expert. I'm not a you know, um, uh, you know. I do have a degree in fine art, if that, if that stands for anything. I think I do have a bit of a knack with uh, when it comes to a brush and a bit of paint. So if you want to learn how to do that and you know, incre and and improve your backdrops for your photographs and that kind of stuff, I can do anything. Just email me. Okay, so the email to contact me about uh, commissions about the ab lead painting um, lessons is very easy. It's just evilead at gmail.com. Okay, very simple. Or you can contact me, of course, at the Crown of Command podcast at gmail.com, but just evilead at gmail.com is really easy to remember and easy to type, and uh, you get in touch with me. Uh, again, it's going to be like a we can have a five to ten minute, you know, pre sort of um, – conference call talking about your project and what you want to learn and that kind of thing we go through it together so i can prep it and get it ready talk about times uh thanks again i'm going to be rushing off to paint some more banners for the bretonians and uh and some orcs so i really appreciate your support and uh, feedback that is really encouraging to me and it keeps me keep you know keeps on going with everything we've got um now, in terms of battle reports, don't worry. Thanks for your poll on the community section on the YouTube channel. Uh, battle, battle reports will not be going away. Of course, they'll be here to stay. And um, I talked to Paul about that. What we're going to do is basically film the the um, sort of more narrative, white dwarf scenario type ones, the special ones. We're going we're gonna to film those. And the ones that are just one-offs, we might stream them uh, or might – I think generally we just want to just play without the cameras on, without the lights on. Um, we enjoyed that last time when we played Epic. We did a dry run of the um, Chaos vs. Uh, Space Marine Blood Angel Battle Report that features in Epic Space Marine Battles. Um, the book, and it's in White Dwarf as well. It's a classic battle report. So we did that. We just played it through, had a really good day, and we want to do that again next time, but uh, using all the terrain, all the models painted, and you know, making it a really special kind of video. So that's the way I want to focus on that, is making the videos extra special. For, so when you get to see them, they you know they really make an impression. And we try to get I try to make them as accurate as I can to the White Dwarf uh, battle reports as uh, as possible. 
Okay, guys, so that's what's coming into the fu- in the future. So keep with us, hang in there, and uh, keep on painting. And um, we'll see you again in the next one. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.